Hey there everyone, it's Laurel Beard here with a special video because I am taking part in my bestie friends Justine Hovey's collaboration series for April. And today we're talking about back to the basics, tips to making simple cards in just minutes. For Justine's video, she's got loads of tips for you, so I'll be sure to link to her YouTube channel right below in the description. And for me, I'm gonna be showing you how you can add texture to your backgrounds with just one tool. The tool that I'm going to be using is going to be a scoring board. There are several different scoring boards on the market. There's a score pal. I am using the Martha Stewart scoring board. They also have mini scoring boards as well. So there's lots to choose from. So all I'm doing is I'm flipping my paper over and basically I'm pressing in lines. That's basically what the scoreboard does. You're pressing in lines, so you're gonna take your cardstock, put it face down. In this instance, it doesn't matter, it's black on both sides, but I'm pressing the lines on the other side so they pop up, okay? And you can do tons and tons of different designs with this, the sky's the limit. Uh, for these, I just did two lines on one side and one line on the other, and then I took a white ink pad and very gently swiped over where those score lines are to really accentuate those lines with white since it's a black card base. I'm going ahead and heat embossing this image from Avriel onto the black card stock, and here's blooper number one. This is gorgeous embossing powder from WOW, but it's translucent. I chose the wrong kind of, of color, so the pink really didn't show up on this black cardstock. It's almost iridescent. So blooper number one for you. <laughs> Oopsie daisy, my bad, but I'm going to save this card with some Nouveau Shimmer Spray. It's a spray that's full of beautiful mica powder. It shines so well on that black cardstock. It's really gonna leave a lot of shimmer and shine behind. Take a look at this card. I'm gonna uh, show up a still shot here. A blooper's coming though, wait for it. This is a big one. This one really upset me. Uh, so I dried it with my heat gun from WOW and I just think that is absolutely beautiful and it really kind of like, hey, I totally used the right embossing powder here. Now, are you wondering why I cut off half my card in this picture? I wanna show you, do you see that? My dog ate it. Do you see how half the top of the card's missing? My dog ate it. This is the dog. This is the culprit. He ate my card. Mm -hmm. Totally true story. Not kidding. My dog ate my homework to the teacher. Yeah, well, in this case, to all you guys, my dog ate my card. Okay. Moving on to the next card here. I am just lining my card up here and I'm doing some diagonal lines. I'm going to go in both directions. They're going to create diamonds almost, if you will. So that's a pretty background as it is, but I'm going to flip it over and kind of create diagonals or whatever. I'm just totally winging it. There are so many gorgeous backgrounds that you can create with your scoreboard. Uh, so at this, it's not perfect. I mean, a lot of people are perfect. You can use your little tick marks. There's rulers on here that tells you, you know, for exact measurements and whatnot, but uh, I don't always do measurements. I don't always, I'm a rule breaker. Not really. Uh, but in this case, it, it didn't matter. I was kind of a little tick. I was like a half inch off or half a centimeter off, but you're never going to know. Well, you're going to know because I just told you. But regardless, you see my little diamonds there. So I'm taking this cute new stamp set from Ellen Hudson. It's called Everyday Doodles. And I'm just going to line up the images. Now it has an outline image. And then see all the solids there? Those are the like fillers, if you will. So you can ink them up with different colors, which is what I'm going to do to create a fun background, like a doodly background, a doodly textured background. So I'm using my Misty stamping tool, easy placement. I'll ink that up with black ink. Then I'll line up the inside images the exact same way and stamp them with various color inks. Again, using my Misty tool. And then we're gonna get this pretty card. Now in photographs, it's really hard to capture those score lines, uh, but they're there, I promise. And I think this card is really pretty and fun. And I love just, it's very simple with lots of pops of color. All right, let's move on to our next card. I'm, again, just, you kind of line it up. You can kind of nudge it in the corner. You can hold some, get some tape and hold it down if you want in the corners, whatever you want to do. But in this card, I'm actually creating like very, like they're just like almost abutting next to each other, creating like almost like a sun ray, if you will, going from one corner and like working its way out. You'll see what I mean in a second. So 
I went in with these backgrounds with no plan whatsoever. I just basically put my piece of paper down and just scored some stuff and hoped that it worked out. No, I'm kidding. I mean, I when, after I got my first line down, I kind of knew where I was going. So this card my dog ate completely, so I'm not going to have a finished photo, but check out what I did. I used three different colors of Distress Ink Oxide, squeezed lemonade, spiced marmalade, and picked raspberry. And I just kind of accentuated the scored lines with the ink and one of those makeup blending brushes that I talked about in a previous video. This is a makeup brush I actually got off of Amazon. If you want to take a look at that video, uh, check it out right here up in the right hand corner. I did flick on a little bit of water and that card is finished and it's really pretty and I guess my dog really liked it because I only found a few bits of it left. All right, so moving on to this card. This is a cute little hedgehog in a teacup from Penny Black. And again, all the supplies that I'm using are linked below in the description in the order that they appear here on the video for you. So I'm using my Misty tool so I can ensure that I get good placement and plus I can go ahead and ink up my image and my everything at the same time because I'm totally lazy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so you notice I haven't done any scoring here. That's because I'm going to score it after I go ahead and get my image down. These are Arteza markers from, I will link to them below. They are brand new to me. These are alcohol ink markers. They have a fine tip and a chisel tip. And I am not good with alcohol markers. So I don't invest in the high dollar artist grade alcohol markers like the Copics just because they're so expensive. These are really great alcohol markers. I didn't have any problems blending, but I only did two colors at a time and it does come with a blender pen as well. So um, for my skill of, of alcohol ink coloring, which is a novice, if you will, I <laughs> like for reals, uh, these are really great markers. They come in that bag that you saw me take them out of. So I love that it comes already with a carrying case and you're good to go. The carrying case actually will lay flat for you as well. And these also are not completely round, so they won't roll all over your table, which I very much appreciate. Now, Arteza did send these markers to me. They sent me an email and asked me if I would try them, and I said I would, and if I was able to use them, then I will do a video with them. And if I wasn't, then you would never even hear from me about them. So I found that they worked very well for me. Again, I just did the absolute basics of coloring. I used that blender pen quite a bit to add some shading and it worked just fine for me. So if you're a beginner and you want to try out some alcohol ink markers, then these might be a good bet for you. So at this point, I'm turning my card upside down because remember, you're pressing in the score line. So they kind of pop out the other side and I'm scoring around my image. And now because I use the alcohol markers, I can actually see where my image begins and ends. So I'm able to score right around that. And this is probably my favorite way of, uh, of using the scoring tool and the scoreboard because I thought that really added a nice touch to it. And the fact that the image itself doesn't have any score lines and it really makes it pop even more. I'm applying some tonic crystal glaze over the cup there and then I'll set that aside to dry and this card turned out really, really cute. All right, let's move on to another background that you can easily create with your scoring board and that's almost creating a checkerboarded type pattern. So I'm just going in and again, because all the score lines are there, they're, they're uh, ticked off in quarters, I can just easily go in and make sure I'm, I'm spacing everything evenly and then I'll just create this little checkerboarded grid pattern, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very, look how quick this is, like boom, 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 boom. Now you can use colored cardstock, you can score over glitter cardstock. I wouldn't do anything super thin. I wouldn't go under 80 pounds because if you press too hard, you're gonna rip your paper. Uh, so, but I don't typically use any cardstock that's less than 80 pounds anyway. So then I'm going over with some Distress Oxides with a blending brush and then I'm taking my pad and very lightly swiping it again just to draw up, accentuate those score lines even more. Now at this point I am using my Misty tool because it's textured now, that card base. It's too uneven for me to risk stamping without a Misty. So I'm inking that up with some Catherine Pooler ink and the dark brown color called Icing on the Cake. <laughs> And then again, I'm gonna use that Nouveau Mica Mist. It just saves the day for me. Now this ink is water reactive in the Catherine Pooler line. Everything but the, her black ink is water reactive. So I did get a little bit of movement from brown ink, but I think it turned out just fine for me. This wasn't even watercolored cardstock. That Nouveau Mica Mist was a complete afterthought. 
but I think it turned out really great. And I love that little checkerboarded scored background. So you get the pattern and you're getting the raised dimension from the scored lines. Now this card is completely gone in two ways. The card is gone and the video footage, and I can't blame Max for that one. But this is a card I stamped, the floral image. It's a background stamp from the ton. I scored those three diagonal lines, and then I swiped on some Versamark embossing powder and then heat embossed, and that's how I got this card. Now the real mystery is, how did I get a photo of this? Hmm. That's a mystery that will remain unsolved. So here is a look-see at some of the cards I showed in the video today. Oh, I really love this card. How do you like my strategic photographing here? Because the front top right corner is chomped off. <laughs> this is the only card that survived. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying Justine's collaboration for the month of April. And again, all the information you need is below in the description. Here's a couple of other videos you might want to check out where I actually still have the cards because Max did not eat them. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. Thanks for watching.